Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm gonna be addressing my MacBook Pro's overheating issue. I've owned this almost seven year old laptop for over two years now, and I've done no repairs to it. This MacBook has been reaching temperatures of over 90 degrees when doing basic tasks. Not only is this bad for the laptop, but it's unbearable to use on my lap, almost burning my skin. Macs are known for running hot, as the fans aren't programmed to spin up until the device reaches a high temperature in order to keep the device silent. To address this issue, I'll be cleaning out the insides of this laptop and replacing the seven-year-old thermal paste. I'll be using compressed air, a brush, alcohol, a cleaning cloth, and some new thermal paste. To begin, I will shut down and flip over the MacBook Pro. Next, we can remove the 10 P5 screws holding in place the bottom cover. This is our first sign of Apple not wanting us inside my own laptop, given these proprietary pentalobe screws, similar to the ones found on the iPhone. With the screws removed, the back panel is still clipped in with two clips in the middle of the laptop, which can be tough to get undone. You should be careful when removing the back panel, as while it's very thin, it's also razor sharp. I managed to cut my finger during this process. The back came off with a small dust cloud, but now that we're in, we can take a closer look at the insides. Frankly, I am shocked to see this amount of dust and grime in my laptop. While I did purchase it secondhand, in the time that I've owned it, I wouldn't say I've used it in any forms of dusty environments. The fans and vents are caked with dust, seriously impacting on the airflow. Even the bottom plate we just removed is filthy. In fact, the dust marks show how the air is circulated and drawn in from the side vents. But it's now time we actually took some action and got this MacBook Pro looking a little bit nicer and getting better airflow. The first thing I'm going to do is disconnect that battery to avoid any power running through the device while we're taking various bits out and cleaning it. The first thing I'm going to remove is the fan assembly. I'll start with the one on the left hand side of the laptop. Removing three screws and a flex cable, we can take out that fan and it reveals a huge piece of dust underneath. I can then move across to the right hand side of the laptop where I can disconnect the airport card, a couple of flex cables, and actually start unscrewing the fan and also the Wi-Fi card. This will give us access to the flex cable for that second fan which we'll need to disconnect before we can entirely remove the fan assembly. Next to come out is this heatsink assembly, which is responsible for cooling both the CPU and GPU of this MacBook Pro. Now these are spring loaded, so I will remove them in a star pattern. The reason I'm doing this is I don't wanna to apply too much pressure to one side of each chip, as having too much pressure could result in cracking it in half, which of course would ruin the entire laptop. With those removed, there are two remaining screws for the heatsink, and then it can be lifted out of place. Taking a closer look at the fans we removed earlier, it's time to get these looking like new. While I could just hit them with some compressed air and a brush at this point, I wanted to disassemble them a little bit further so I could get better access to the actual fins of the fan. With three screws, the outer shell comes right off. And this gives me much better access to give these a good clean. I started with some compressed air, but this didn't really do too much as the dust was pretty caked on. This is where I came in with a household painting brush to give it a bit of a clean. Now I wouldn't recommend using this brush on certain parts of the motherboard or anything like that as it's not electrostatic safe, but for a fan it's going to work just fine. After a good clean I gave it another go with some compressed air just to finish things off. It's now time to do the other fan, repeating the exact same process to remove all that dust and grime. Once we've given the insides of both fans a good clean, I can turn my attention to the outer housings where I can also brush them down, removing any dust. The final thing left to do with these fans is of course reassemble them. Putting back in the three screws for each fan, you can see just how much cleaner these are looking. Next up, we can turn our attention to the heat sink where I can hit it with some compressed air to remove any dust built up in the actual heat sink fins making sure that they are nice and clean. I'll also need to remove any of the old thermal paste which is remaining on these copper pads. Using some alcohol and a paper towel, we can wipe the old stuff right off. Now old thermal paste like this probably isn't helping transfer the heat as well as it should from the CPU to the heat pipe. 
With the fans and heatsink ready for installation, we can turn our attention to cleaning the rest of the internals. I did this using compressed air on the logic board, which removed the majority of dust. Afterwards, a brush helped for cleaning the air vents and battery. You don't want to use any kind of vacuum as it can create static and even suck components off of the board. However, be cautious with using compressed air as it can release moisture as you can see here. This won't cause any harm if the battery is disconnected and the moisture is removed before reapplying power. The last bit of cleaning I'm going to need to do is for the CPU and GPU. I'll need to remove as much of that old thermal paste as possible. Then I can come in and apply some new thermal paste and apply what I believe is to be the correct amount. People will say that you applied too much or too little, but really just use a bit of common sense when it comes to this and apply what you think will spread nice and evenly when you press down on the heatsink. With the heatsink seated into place, I can tighten up the screws using a star pattern to evenly apply pressure as I'm tightening down everything. With that done, we can install two more screws for this heatsink, and then it's time to put these fans back into place. I'm going to start on the right hand side and line everything up correctly, connect the flex cable and install the three screws. Then we can go ahead and route the airport and camera flex cable wires and connect up the webcam itself, reinstall the Wi-Fi card and its appropriate screw and connect the three antenna wires. Making sure to put back this piece of rubber, we can move across to the left hand side and this fan is much simpler to connect. It's just a flex cable and three screws. However, when installing the fan, I noticed a fried component on the logic board near the speaker connection. So I hit up my good friend Federico who specializes in data recovery and board repair. I will leave a link to his website down below. He pointed out that this is a shorted capacitor connected to the audio amplifier and if completely shorted would result in no sound. I did notice a small drop in the volume output of my laptop about six months ago, so this would be the reason. So I won't be fixing this today as I don't have the replacement part or a donor board. My sound for the meantime is working just fine. So all that's left to do is reconnect that battery and you can see just how much cleaner this MacBook Pro is looking. This should drastically improve overall performance and keep my MacBook running a lot cooler. All that's left to do is reinstall the bottom plate, which I will need to clean with some alcohol and another paper towel. With a quick wipe down, it's looking pretty good. We can seat it down back onto the MacBook and reinstall the 10 pentalobe screws. Although looking great, I did give the outer casing a good clean as well with a microfiber cloth and some alcohol. And we're done. So this is it. With a little bit of work and some time, my MacBook Pro will be running much cooler as a result of the good cleaning and new thermal paste. For those wondering, this is a late 2013 MacBook Pro with a 2.3 GHz i7, 16 gigs of RAM and a GeForce GT750 graphics card. And yes, even with that fried capacitor on the audio amp, the sound is still working. Are you interested in custom phones and restoring and fixing up destroyed technology? Well, you're in the right place. I would recommend to anyone with a laptop that's running hot or is older than five years to open it up, clean it and apply some new thermal paste, as I've just done to mine. Otherwise, you run the risk of damaging your device if it becomes too hot and cannot properly dissipate heat due to dust building up inside. If you're looking for a way to be able to control your Max fans and set their speed based on temperature, you can use a program called Max Fan Control, which I'll leave linked below. I'd recommend this to anyone with an Apple computer, because if configured well, can keep your computer much cooler. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the electronics repair playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for some helpful tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my new website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.